Today we look at the Marlin firmware that runs on your 3D printer and we configure it from scratch. On your 3D printer there is some software, or firmware, that lives on your mainboard that controls how your 3D printer does things. The most popular flavor of this firmware is called Marlin. Marlin is a program coded in the C language and compiled for Arduino based controller boards. Marlin can be somewhat difficult to understand and configure and you can't see what the existing configuration of Marlin looks like that's currently running on your 3D printer. Or in other words, you can't just go download a copy of the current firmware from your 3D printer. If you want to make a permanent configuration change that doesn't just live in EEPROM, your only option is to go find a version of that software, make your update, and completely reflash the mainboard with a new copy. If your 3D printer manufacturer didn't give you a tailored version of this firmware for this machine, this can at best be somewhat difficult. Because of this scenario, upgrading to a newer version of Marlin can also be somewhat tricky, because you might not know which defaults need to be changed to work with your specific 3D printer. Marlin is under constant development, and they're always coming out with great new features that you might want to try in the future. So today we're going to go over a from scratch configuration of Marlin, and a few tips to help you upgrade a current version of Marlin that you might already have. First thing you need to do is head out and get a copy of the Arduino IDE. This is the editor and the compiler that we're going to use for Marlin. I already have a copy installed, but it's a pretty simple install, so we'll skip this part. Then we head over and we download the latest and greatest version of Marlin. Today the current stable release is 1.1.8. We download the zip file, head to downloads, extract all, open up the Marlin folder, Marlin folder again, Scroll down and click on the Marlin INO file. This will open up the whole Marlin project. There are two main files in Marlin that you're going to be interested in editing. One is configuration.h and one is configuration underscore advanced or adv.h. We'll start in configuration.h. We'll just work our way down through this file. The first thing you come to is configuration version number. You might want to consider updating this so you can better keep track of your configurations. There are some notes here about Delta and SCAR printers that you might want to check out, but for this tutorial, we're going to be working with a Cartesian machine. The next section we come to is the info section. This is where you can set the author of Marlin, who did this configuration, and you can choose to show a boot screen if you like. You will need a full graphical display if you choose to use that option. So here, we'll say Chris Riley and log 1.1.8 config. We'll skip show custom boot screen. If you're using more than one serial port, you can change that here, but zero for default usually works just fine. Choose the baud rate or speed that you would like to communicate with your serial port. I'll leave mine default at 250,000. You just need to remember this when you're setting up Pronterface. We'll leave Bluetooth off. And now we need to select which main board we have. If you need to figure out what motherboard name you need to use here, head over to the Boards tab. In the Boards tab, they give you a list of all the boards that are currently supported by Marlin and the name you need to use in configuration.h. My board is number 43. It's a Ramps 1.4 EFB. So this is an EFB configuration. All that means is this port is for the extruder, this port is for the fan, and this port is for the heated bed. So now we know our board's name, we can head back over to configuration.h and you just paste your board name right next to motherboard. Next we come down to custom machine name. I like to configure a custom machine name because it gives your printer a little character. We're going to call this Log 3D Printer. This is the name that will be displayed across your LCD screen. We'll select how many extruders we have, it's just one. Set your default filament size, mine is 175. The filament size is a setting for firmware options you might not use, but still a good idea to go ahead and configure it to be the correct value. We'll skip over the multiple extruder section because we don't have multiple extruders. And we'll go down to the power options. Here you can select either 0, 1, or 2. 0 is the default PSU like I have. You can select 1 if you want to use an ATX type so you can turn the power supply on and off. Or 2 if you want to use an Xbox 360 supply. So we'll leave this one at 0. Then we'll head into thermal settings. This is where you set what thermistors you're using. Here's a list of thermistor types and what their numbers are. If you don't know what thermistors you have, I recommend going with the Type 1 option. You can tweak this option later if things don't work out correctly, but this is a good default thermistor to use. So we'll scroll down to the temp sensor settings. We'll go with Type 1 thermistor for extruder 0, 
and the bed thermistor. We'll scroll down to the max temp settings. Depending on the hot end you use, you might want to set these a little bit lower. If you have a Teflon lined barrel, you might want to make the maximum of these around 255. Bed temp, I would also recommend lowering the max temp. Maybe around 130. The max temp is what will shut down the 3D printer in case a thermistor were to fall out or something bad were to happen. Then we go to PID settings. PID settings are what allow your extruder and your heat bed to throttle up and down. It pulses the heat on and off so that you don't overshoot or undershoot your desired temperature. You can leave these settings at default at first, but you want to go through and run an auto-tune sequence as soon as you get your printer up and running. You run an auto-tune sequence with the M303 command. Same with the heated bed PID settings. You'll probably want to run an auto-tune command. There's an example of the auto-tune command right here. After the auto-tune command completes, it will spit out the results that look like this, and you can just copy and paste them in the firmware and re-upload. Then we move on to extruder min temp. This is what prevents your extruder from grinding through the filament if your hot end isn't at the desired temperature. 170 is a pretty good mark if you're using mostly PLA. Then there's prevent lengthy extrusion. This is the max amount of extrusion that you can do at one time. This prevents you from accidentally entering 20,000 instead of 200 and having to wait for the extruder to extrude all of that filament or kill it and start over. Thermal runaway protection is a very important section. You want to make sure both of these lines are uncommented. This is what can save your printer from harming itself or its surroundings if something bad happened. We'll skip the Core XY section because this is not a Core XY machine. Now we're down to end stop settings. Most of the time on a Cartesian machine, you're going to be using min end stop plugs. On things like deltas, you would use the max plugs. But default works for this machine. This section enables end stop pull up resistors. This enables the internal pull up resistor that's on the main board. This helps the micro switch decide if it's on or off. You don't want it in a floating position. Go with default settings. And then end stop inverting. Depending on the type of end stop you use, you might need to adjust these. After you load Marlin for the first time, this is pretty easy to check. From Pronterface, if you do the M119 command, this shows you the current status of your end stops. Currently on this printer, none of the end stops are triggered. If you trigger one of the end stops and rerun that command, you can see the X end stop is now triggered. If none of the end stops are triggered and they don't read open, then in your Marlin, you'll need to switch the inverting to either true or false. So in this case, let's say the X end stop wasn't reading open. I would change this value to true. Now onto movement settings. These are the settings that are very specific to each machine. This machine has a direct drive extruder, so let's get the E steps out of the way first. The very right setting is the E step setting. For a direct drive extruder with 1.75 filament, and an 8mm gear, 100 is a great value to start with. For the X and Y settings, we're going to need a little bit of information. To calculate the X and Y steps, you're going to need to know how big your pulleys are and how many teeth they have. That's the gears on the motor and on the idler side. For the X, that's these two, and for the Y, that's these two. Once you know what those values are, we can head over to the Prusa calculator. We'll scroll down to the stepper motor section. Our stepper motors have a 1.8 degree pitch. That's the most common. Our belt is a GT2 belt. It has a pitch of 2. That means there's a tooth on the belt every 2 millimeters. We run it 16 times micro-stepping. I'm using A49A8 Palulu drivers. And if all the jumpers are on your ramp board, that means it's 16 times micro-stepping. And my pulley tooth count is 16. I use the same pulleys and belt on the X and the Y, so that means our X and Y steps will both be 100. We'll make these updates here. Now we need to calculate the Z steps. Back to the calculator, we'll use the steps per millimeter for lead screws. Again, we have 1.8 degree motors. We're using 16 times micro-stepping. Then you need to set what type of lead screw or threaded rod that you're using. Just to give you an example, this is a two start lead screw, this is a four start lead screw, and this is an eight millimeter threaded rod. You can calculate the pitch by counting how many threads per millimeter. 
The easiest way for me to do this is to count how many threads are in one centimeter and then divide it. The most common 8mm threaded rod is going to have 8 threads per centimeter. So if you divide 10 by 8, that comes out to 1.25 threads per millimeter. If your printer uses multi-start lead screws like this one, you can tell how many starts a lead screw is by how many times the thread has entries. So basically, it has four starts. So let's say we were using an 8mm threaded rod. The lead screw pitch would be 1 to 5. The gear ratio is 1 to 1 because they're directly attached to the stepper motor. So your Z step count would be 2560. Let's say you're using a four start lead screw. That lead screw's pitch is two. That changes this value to 1600, but you have to remember you're starting four times. So your value would be one fourth this amount. So your Z steps would be 400. On the log printer, I actually use a five millimeter threaded rod. So we'll go to the presets, choose an M5 rod. Its pitch is 0.8 and the result step count will be 4,000. So we'll make the Z steps 4,000 in the firmware. Now we move on to default max feed rate. The feed rate setting is a throwback from CNC machines. Some materials would have a maximum feed rate at which they could be cut. So basically your feed rate is the maximum speed that your axis will move. No matter what your G code feed rate is, it cannot exceed this value that is set in the firmware. For a brand new machine, I recommend going with 200 for the X and the Y, 2 for the Z, and 20 for the extruder. These are pretty low speeds for a 3D printer, but if you're not sure what to set these at, it's better to start slow and then ramp up later. Now we move to default max acceleration settings. This is the maximum rate that an axis can move to get to its desired speed. These default values are good to start with. If you start skipping steps or seeing issues, lower them a bit. This default acceleration setting is the acceleration setting for the nozzle, so it's a combined X, Y, Z, and E acceleration max. Default retract acceleration is for extruder acceleration retracts, so filament moving in the reverse direction. And then default travel acceleration. This is for non-printing moves. Then we move the default jerk settings. As you accelerate towards your max speed, Jerk limits the difference of the initial speed and the final speed. So if your printer wants to increase speed from 100 to 200 millimeters a second, you would accelerate at a value of 3000. That's ramping up at that acceleration rate. Let's say you wanted to increase speed from 100 to 120, and your jerk value was set to 20. This move would happen instantaneously, ignoring acceleration. If jerk is set too high, you'll get ringing on your model or skip steps. If it's set too low, you'll see blobbing. These default values are pretty good, except for the e-jerk setting. I like that to be a lot lower, so we'll set that at two. The next section is Z-probe options. I go over bed leveling in a different video, so you can check out those options here. Skipping down to the machine section, this is where you can invert the rotation of the motor. If you try to home your printer and your axes are moving the wrong direction, you can change that value here, the same effect can be achieved by flipping over the motor cable. Same logic here for your extruder motors. Direction of end stops. If your X carriage has to move to the left to hit an end stop, that's a negative one value. If your bed has to move back to hit an end stop, that's a negative one value. If your Z has to move down to hit an end stop, that's a negative one value. If any of these are in the opposite direction, that would be a positive value. So front, or right, or up, is positive. Bed size, this machine is 250 by 210. That's the build plate volume. Your minimum X, Y, and Z position, these are useful if your hot end is actually outside of the build area when you're at home. Start with zeros for now, but if you're not able to print in the center of the bed when your print starts, then you might need to adjust these. Your max X, Y, and Z values, X and Y are going to be set by these values up here. That's your maximum build volume. And then Z you can set manually for the maximum Z height of your printer. My maximum Z height is 200. Minimum and maximum software end stops. When you reach your 000 home point, this setting does not enable you to go into a negative value. So say you were trying to calibrate your Z probe. If you needed to move the hot end further past zero, 
the minimum software in-stop setting would not allow you to do that. Maximum software in-stop is the same. If you go outside of your build volume, maximum software in-stops will not let you move past that amount. We'll skip the filament runout sensor options. Again, we'll skip bed leveling. We will also skip bed skew compensation. This could be a whole other video and we might touch on that later. Down to additional features. If you would like to use EEPROM commands like M500, M501, M502, you can enable EEPROM here. This will allow you to set configuration items in EEPROM without having to change the actual Marlin code. That's what we're doing here. I don't like to enable EEPROM, especially for first time printers, because it can make things confusing. You might end up with settings in EEPROM that don't reflect what the settings are in Marlin. So I'm going to leave this one commented out for now. Preheat constraints. This is where you can set what temperatures your preheat values are. These are the preheat values that you see on your LCD screen. Then we skip down to LCD and SD support. You select your LCD language here. You can enable your SD card by uncommenting this line. If your encoder wheel is not moving the options in the right direction, you can change that by uncommenting this line. If you want to enable your LCD speaker, you can do that here by uncommenting this line. Now we come down to the LCD controller type. This is where you can select what type of LCD you have. This printer and a lot of other printers use the RipRap Discount Smart Controller, so you can uncomment that line. Another common type of display is the RipRap Discount Full Graphic Smart Controller. If you have one of those, uncomment that line. Now we can move on to Configuration Advanced. There are only a couple of settings in the Advanced tab that I want to mention. Most of these settings you'll never need to change, but I will have a more in-depth Marlin tutorial at a later time. The first setting I wanted to mention is the Auto Hot End Fan. This is the setting that allows you to pick a board pin to connect your fan to and give it a certain temperature that the fan will kick on. This is so your hot end fan doesn't run constantly. You have to have a pin to assign this fan to that can be controlled with Marlin. My printer currently just has the fan hooked up to 12 volt, so I can't use this feature, but it is a handy feature to have. You can assign that fan pin if you'd like in the pins.h file. And last but not least, we scroll down to baby stepping. If you would like to enable baby stepping, just remove this comment. I also recommend if you're using baby stepping that you make sure double click max interval is uncommented. This allows you to double click your encoder wheel to bring up the baby stepping option. Baby stepping allows you to raise and lower your z-axis by very small amounts to get your first layer just perfect. So that will get Marlin configured for first time use for a brand new printer. What about if you just want to upgrade a configuration of Marlin that you already have to the newest configuration? Let's take a look at an easier way to do that. If you're currently using Marlin on your 3D printer, but you don't have a copy of it to compare it to the new version of Marlin, you can do an M503 command. This will display a lot of the settings that you can use in your new version of Marlin to get your printer up and going. When I currently have a tailored version of Marlin for my 3D printer and I just want to upgrade to the newest version of Marlin, I use Notepad++ and the Compare plugin just to compare the configuration.h files and make only the changes necessary. So you can download Notepad++ and then you'll need to search for the Notepad++ Compare plugin. After the plugin is downloaded, we'll extract all, we'll copy the Compare DLL, we'll go to C drive, Program Files x86, Notepad++, Plugins, and paste our DLL in here. Now we can open up Notepad++. We'll go find my old configuration.h file. This one is configured for log with version 1.1.6, and then we'll find the new 1.1.8 configuration.h file. With them loaded up side by side, I have the old on the left and the new on the right. So now we can just go to plugins, hit compare. This should show you all the differences in between the two files. We'll just scroll through slowly and compare the two. Now we can just scroll through the files and compare them side by side and make the changes that are necessary. The version lines are different, that's to be expected. We'll go ahead and fill in the author information. Add the machine UUID set, but we don't need to set that, that's not necessary. This is all the new stuff for the multi-material settings. We don't have that on this machine. Looks like I used 11 for my thermistor on the hot end and one for my bed. I had max temp set at 260. 
and 120 for the bed. I'll go ahead and copy over my previously used PID auto-tune settings. We'll just comment on the default ones and copy those over. I had PID bed temp set. We'll just copy those settings as well. Looks like I had the X and Y in stops set to true. X steps is 100, Y steps is 100, and I had the E steps set to 148. E steps can be calibrated after fairly easily. Speed rates are at 200, 200 on the Y, and 3 on the Z. Jerk settings I had set at 0.4 and 2. We'll go ahead and update the Z probe options. Looks like this option has been removed. Looks like I had BL Touch enabled in the old version, but that was probably just for some testing. This is actually a fixed mounted probe. We'll uncomment that. We'll copy the probe location and offset. Looks like double touch probing has changed to multiple probing. We'll uncomment that. We had the repeatability test enabled. We'll go ahead and uncomment that as well. We had inverted some of our motor connections. We'll go ahead and set those to be the same. Same with the extruder. It was set to true. We'll change this one to true. We adjusted the Y position of the home to negative four. We'll go ahead and set that. I had it set to 230 and 210. That was probably to avoid the bed clips. I had minimum software installs disabled. We'll enable bilinear bed leveling. We'll change the probe bed positions. This is the area that the probe is allowed to probe when leveling. Some changes to unified bed leveling, but we don't use that. Changes to safe homing, but that's just an update. This is the new SKU compensation. We don't have that set. We'll change the filament default temperatures. We'll enable SD support. We'll reverse encoder direction. We'll enable the speaker. And we'll turn on the RipRap Discount Smart Controller. That looks to be all the changes. We can save that now. And just for fun, let's go ahead and compare the config.advanced as well. We'll open the old config.add file. We'll open the new config.add file. We'll hit compare. There shouldn't be too much different in here because there's not a lot of changes in this file. Looks like I did have baby stepping enabled. We'll comment that out. I had a multi-factor set at 10. I allowed it to just Z probe offset and double click for baby stepping. And that looks to be about the only changes in config.app. So we'll save that. Now we'll head back into the new version of Marlin. We'll open up the INO file again. And just so you can see, when you boot the printer right now, you get Marlin 1.1.6. Let's do a verify and compile the program. The compile is complete. This just checked all our files and made sure all the edits we made were correct. Now we can upload to the printer. Plug your printer in USB. Make sure your board is the correct one. Mine is an AT Mega 2560. Make sure you're on the right port. And click upload. When the upload's complete, the firmware will restart and you can see we're on 1.1.8. Now we'll open up Printerface. We'll connect up. We'll make sure the printer is moving as expected. X axis, Y axis, Z axis. And if all those look good, let's try to auto home. That looks good. Let's see if we can G29, that's auto bed leveling. Auto bed leveling looks good. Let's set the hot end and the heat bed. We'll turn them to on and make sure they're heating up correctly. Looks like both of those are working as well. And there you go. Now we've upgraded our printer to Marlin 1.1.8. Everything's working and we're ready to start printing. I do intend to make some more in-depth videos on a lot of the Marlin features, so stay tuned for those. I hope you liked this video and you found it helpful. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts in the comments below, and as always, thanks for watching.